you for joining me for this COCA project webinar. My name is Jonna Kunzi and I'm based at the Institute of Psychiatry, Psychology and Neuroscience at King's College London. This webinar asks the question, does physical activity improve the symptoms of ADHD? If we first define physical activity, so by physical activity here we mean any bodily movement produced by skeletal muscles that requires energy expenditure. So this means it includes but is not limited to uh, exercise. There's quite a lot of anecdotal evidence that exercise may help uh, with ADHD symptoms. For example, uh, the Olympic swimmer Michael Phelps, he was diagnosed with ADHD in childhood. He has commented um, the following. I could go fast in the pool. It turned out in part because being in the pool slowed down my mind. In the water, I felt for the first time in control. My mum loved the fact that I swam because she wanted me to train as much energy out of my body as I possibly could. Another example is uh, the British gymnast Lewis Smith, who has often talked about uh, how his uh, strict training regime helped him to control his ADHD symptoms. And a few years ago, I had the opportunity with my colleague Philip Asherson to be involved in a documentary about Lewis Smith and his ADHD. And it was very interesting talking to him about it. And he has really a lot of insight into how uh, he was using exercise to help him cope with, with his ADHD. But what is the scientific evidence? So in 2013, we reviewed the literature and produced uh, this review article. We did a systematic search for studies using these keywords that are listed here. And the selection criteria are listed here. And the selection process was very detailed. And so uh, we covered the following topics. So we included animal studies and then focusing on children with ADHD. We looked at short term, so acute effects of exercise and separately longer term physical activity. And we also discussed potential mechanisms. From the animal studies that were available, we concluded there was some evidence that physical activity can have positive effects on attentional functioning and hyperactivity. And there was also some evidence that there could be a greater effect earlier on in development. But overall, the evidence was quite limited. And then looking at effects of acute exercise. So here we are looking at just one single session of physical activity in children with ADHD. And I have one uh, study example here, just to illustrate what type of research has been done. So this study is from 2012. And here they had two groups. They had children with ADHD who were in the intervention group and they did 30 minutes of moderate physical activity. And the uh, control group of children with ADHD watched a 30 minute physical activity related video. There were 20 children in each group. They were aged um, on average 10 years. And the study found that 30 minutes of acute physical activity improved cognitive performance in children with ADHD. And this was seen on the color word Stroop test of interference. And so putting all the studies together that were available and fulfilled our study inclusion criteria, we concluded that there is some evidence that acute exercise may have a positive impact on a range of cognitive functions and so cognitive impairments that have been associated with ADHD. And uh, for example, there were effects seen on aspects of executive functioning. And these effects were seen both in children with ADHD and in controlled children. Then looking at the studies on chronic physical activity, so longer term uh, physical activity. Here is one example study from 2011. And so there were two groups again, so two groups of children with ADHD on average 13 year olds. There were 42 in each group 
and the inter intervention group uh, did moderate intensity physical activity three times a week for 10 weeks and there was no intervention for the comparison con uh, group and the result was that uh, physical activity improved teacher ratings of attention. And so we concluded in this review that there was some evidence that exercise may improve cognitive impairments and behavioural symptoms associated with ADHD. But uh, we also noted that a lot of the uh, studies uh, had methodological limitations and so there was clearly a need for better quality evidence. We also discussed the possible mechanisms and uh, when we published this review in the Journal of the American Academy of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry, uh, uh, the editor Sam Cortese uh, wrote an editorial on this uh, review and he uh, wrote Rommel et al. should be praised for pointing to a possible novel management approach in ADHD focusing on protective rather than risk factors within a neurodevelopmental perspective. However, their review suggests that there is still a long run ahead to understand if, to which extent, and how physical exercise can be an effective treatment, preventive strategy for ADHD. Such research could turn out to be a very fruitful exercise for the field with ultimately relevant impact for our patients. And so it was a relatively new topic at the time. And there's been more uh, papers on this topic since. And there's also been now uh, a few meta-analyses published since uh, our review. One meta-analysis was published in 2015. Here they included eight randomized controlled trials. And they concluded that Aerobic exercise had a moderate to large effect on ADHD symptoms, anxiety, executive function and social disorders. There was also uh, another meta-analysis uh, published in 2016. And here the authors were focusing on what they called functional outcomes. And, and this meant uh, executive functioning and motor outcomes. And there was a, a significant effect overall with a G of 0.63. And most recently, there is another meta-analysis from 2019, where they included 14 studies and in total 574 participants with ADHD. And they concluded that exercise compared to a control condition led to improvements in depression and anxiety, in thought problems, in aggressive behaviors, and in social problems. In this study, they didn't see statistically significant effects for ADHD symptoms. Uh, there are some methodological um, challenges here, but that is uh, uh, a topic for uh, discussion another time. And since our review, our group has done more research on this topic, and I'm going to show you results from two of our published studies first. So we did uh, a longitudinal analysis on data from uh, a twin sample uh, with our collaborators in Sweden. And then another one, another example is our lab study of the effects of acute exercise on brain function. So first I'll describe you the, uh, the collaboration uh, with our colleagues uh, at Karolinska in Sweden. And so here we ask the question, is a higher level of physical activity in late adolescence linked to reduced ADHD symptoms in early adulthood? And the data were from the Swedish twin study of child and adolescent development, the CHAD study. And we had data from 232 identical twin pairs. They were aged 16 to 17 at baseline and 19 to 20 at follow-up. And the measures here were First of all, parent-rated ADHD symptoms at baseline and follow-up. And we had self-ratings of physical activity at baseline. And our colleagues were able to estimate energy expenditure uh, when uh, they used the information on the intensity, duration and frequency of exercise. And the strength of this study is in particular that it was a study of identical twin pairs. So we were comparing each participant to their identical twin. 
And the benefit of this is that we can then control for unmeasured genetic and shared environmental confounding. And our main finding in this study was that greater energy expenditure at age 16 to 17 predicted reduced ADHD symptoms at age 19 to 20, even after we had adjusted for unmeasured confounding. And so we can make the confident conclusion that physical activity in adolescents seem to be decreasing ADHD symptoms in early adulthood. And one limitation of this study is that uh, we only had self ratings of physical activity and they were obtained at one time point only. This was a study on a population based sample, so not individuals with a diagnosis of ADHD. And we know from uh, uh, genetic and other research that ADHD diagnosis represents the extreme end of a continuum of ADHD symptoms, and so it's informative. Uh, to look at ADHD symptom in, symptoms in population samples, um, as well as continuing, of course, with research also on diagnosed samples. The other study we have uh, completed is a study on acute high in intensity exercise and its effects on brain measures of attention processes. And this was led by um, Ebba de Ries, who was a PhD student in our group at the time. And so this is the study we called FAB, Effect of Physical Activity on Brain Function. And it was a very carefully controlled study in the lab, so a randomized crossover study. And the question we asked here is whether a single session of exercise improves brain function, um, and in particular attention processes. And we had 29 men, adult men, who uh, participated in this, and they each attended our lab three times. And so the exercise here was uh, cycling on a bike in the lab for 30 minutes and the control or the comparison con condition was at seated rest. So they were sitting on the bike uh, while not cycling. In either case, the participants were watching a documentary and we measured respiratory measures and heart rate. And so they had to all come to the center, uh, to the lab three times, the baseline included baseline assessments. The, visit, the second visit was uh, uh, involved, uh, first of all, them completing three cognitive tests while we also measured EEG. Then they did either the exercise or the rest condition and followed by them doing the same cognitive test and EEG recording again. And then seven days later was the last visit, which was the same as visit two, except that they did the rest condition if they had done the exercise last time and vice versa. So what improved following exercise? Uh, on a cognitive task called uh, the continuous performance test, we saw effects on measures of attention, which are called the GoB3 and Delta activity. And so this is evidence that uh, exercise, and in this case it was quite intense exercise, may improve some aspects of attention. However, we note that we saw this effect only in the first of the three cognitive tasks. So it may be that the effects are quite short lasting. And so we didn't see effect on the other tasks or on other variables. We also have a couple of studies that are still ongoing. Uh, uh, that are relevant here, so I'll describe them briefly as well. So one study is the international collaboration, COCA PROUD study, which many of you know about. So this is a clinical trial on the effects of exercise in adults with ADHD, coordinated uh, by the Frankfurt site. And then another ongoing project is our project in, in London specifically on ADHD remote technology. So the PROUD study is a pilot randomized controlled phase 2a trial on prevention of comorbid depression and obesity in ADHD. And so here we are testing uh, two non-pharmacological interventions uh, in adolescents and young adults with ADHD. And one of them is aerobic exercise intervention. And so we are using mobile health based monitoring and reinforcement. And so across four sites, including us in London as well, we are 
uh, collecting data uh, from over 200 participants. And this includes 10 weeks of intervention or treatment as usual. And we are looking at a range of outcomes, including depression, obesity, ADHD. And so we're using smartphones and we're using activity wrist sensors uh, in the exercise arm. And the exercise involves strengthening exercises twice a week, an aerobic exercise three times a week, and this can be running or cycling or swimming. And so we are seeing if uh, such exercise over 10 weeks improves the outcomes compared to the other conditions. And the data collection is still ongoing, so we won't have the results quite yet. The other ongoing project is our ADHD remote technology project, which I'm leading with my colleague Richard Dobson. And you can see uh, it involves many other investigators and colleagues, and also two PhD students are working with us. And the main aim of the art project overall is to develop and pilot a novel remote assessment system for ADHD, which incorporates active and passive monitoring using mobile and web technologies. And our longer term aim here is to um, develop this monitoring, remote monitoring system for ADHD that can be used for both research and clinical long-term monitoring of the symptoms of various impairments and health-related behaviours that includes physical activity. And then the ultimate aim really is that th this will help support the self-management and clinical, clinician decision-making and ultimately improve the outcomes for people with ADHD. And this is linked to the RadarBase, which is an open source mobile health platform developed by Richard Dobson and his colleagues. And the RadarBase, uh, this includes both passive monitoring with measures such as uh, wearable devices, such as Fitbit and other uh, devices, and smartphone sensors that collect data on an ongoing basis, and other measures in the active monitoring uh, side, which can involve, for example, questionnaires that the participants have to complete at certain intervals or cognitive tasks that they have to perform um, at home. And if we go back to our findings from the Swedish twin study CHAD, which provided really um, convincing evidence really that physical activity in adolescents may decrease ADHD symptoms in early adulthood, uh, I mentioned earlier that some of the limitations in that study were that we were focusing on self-ratings of physical activity and that we obtained these at one time point only. So it's worth saying here that in our art project we are directly addressing these issues as we are, uh, it's another longitudinal uh, uh, approach, but we are obtaining um, objective measures of physical activity using uh, wearable uh, devices and we can do this uh, long term. And then we can look at uh, the changes in physical activity, how they are related to changes in other measures as we are collecting a lot of data uh, over a longer period of time. And so I'm just concluding here um, by saying that there is overall promising initial data on physical activity and ADHD. Uh, there's also uh, understandably various methodological limitations in some of the previous studies, um, but uh, there are new studies ongoing, including our COCA Proud and ART studies, and so we are uh, waiting and seeing what emerges from these studies, so watch this space. Music